In this video we're going to be using the binomial theorem. We're going to look at examples involving expanding binomials, of course. We'll look at an example of prime factorization using the binomial theorem. We will look at binomial approximation and then we'll look at a probability problem. The first two examples are pretty straightforward. These are your standard binomial theorem questions. First one says expand and simplify 4 take x to the power of 4. So using the binomial theorem we know the five terms in this expansion will be 4 choose 0, 4 to the power of 4, that's the first term to the power of the exponent, plus 4 choose 1, 4 to the power of 3, and then we include that second term including the sign, so negative x, plus 4 choose 2, 4 to the power of 2, negative x squared, plus 4 choose 3, 4, times negative x cubed plus 4 choose 4 negative x to the power 4. This really is just a straightforward application of using that theorem, uh, that formula. So notice the exponent of the first term starts at 4 and decreases by 1 and the exponent of the second term starts at 0 and increases by 1. And then we have 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2 and so on. Okay, 4 choose 0 is always 1, anything choose 0 is 1, 4 choose 1 is always just going to be 4. So really the only ones we need to calculate are 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3. This is going to be 6, this is 4. So do all the simplifying, work out the coefficients, you know, work out 4 to the 4, 4 to the 3, multiply everything, simplify, and you should end up with 256 take 256x plus 96x squared take 16x cubed plus x to the 4. And notice when you have a negative in the brackets, you should have this alternating sequence of signs. So you should have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. If you have a binomial with a negative and you don't end up with this pattern, it means you've done something wrong. So always just double check that, you know, make sure you include the sign with this term. And if you're cubing it, you know, negative x cubed is still negative x. Okay, so the second example, find the first four terms in the expansion of two take a half x to the power 10. Usually when you have a binomial expansion with some higher power, if you're talking about sort of exam questions, they're not going to ask you to do the whole expansion. That's just, you know, a bit mean. They'll typically ask you for the first four terms or some specific terms in that, in that expansion. And another note that you can really have anything in these brackets, even though it's called the binomial expansion, you can have absolutely any two terms in these brackets and you can still apply this theorem. Really the only restriction is that this exponent is a natural number so it needs to be a positive whole number exponent. To use this particular theorem we will look at fractional exponents in a later video. So the first four terms in this expansion will be 2 to the 10. Notice I didn't write 10 to 0 this time because that's always going to be 1 uh, so I generally just don't include that first choose function and also the second one I know is going to be 10 whatever the exponent is so usually I would just not write the first function and then just the exponent as the coefficient for the second term so 2 to the power 10 plus 10 2 to the power 9 negative x on 2 plus 10 choose 2 2 to the power 8 negative x on 2 squared plus 10 choose 3 2 to the 7 negative x on 2 cubed and that's the first four terms and we could keep going if we wanted. Then it's just a matter of simplifying, working everything out, calculating 10 choose 2, 10 choose 3, you know, calculating 2 to the 8, 2 to the 9. Really just use your calculator for all of that. Once you've simplified everything, you know, make sure you're dividing by 2. In this case, it's 2 squared. So divide by 4, divide by 8 there. Make sure you get your signs correct and you should end up with 1024 take 2560x plus 2880x squared take 1920x cubed. So that's the first four terms in that expansion. And that's really all there is to, you know, applying the binomial theorem to binomials. Once you've done a few, you've done them all, but I'll include some practice problems in the description. As you know, practice makes perfect. So make sure you're doing lots and lots of problems to get the hang of that. Okay, on to the next one. Let's look at prime factorization. The first part of this question says, show that a plus b to the power 4 take a take b to the power 4 equals 8ab multiplied by a squared plus b squared. So we want to use the binomial theorem on these brackets and then simplify as much as we can. So a plus b to the power 4 will be a to the power 4 plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared 
plus 4ab cubed plus b to the power 4. Notice I didn't do the 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, um, because once you've done a few of these binomials with the power of 4, you start to learn these coefficients, um, and you, you'll be able to do this fairly quickly. So I've just written it out straight away there. Um, then let's do the a take b to the power 4. So we're going to subtract all of this. So I'll put that in large brackets there. So I'll subtract a to the power 4, take 4a cubed b, plus 6a squared b squared, take 4ab cubed, plus b to the power 4. So let's see what we can cancel. We'd have a positive a to the power 4, take a to the power 4. They will cancel. Then we will have 4a cubed b, plus 4a cubed b. We'll have double negative there, so we add those together. Then the 6a squared b squared, they will cancel. Then we'll have an 8 a b cubed, adding those two terms, and then the b to the power 4, they will cancel as well. So we end up with 8a cubed b plus 8a b cubed, and we can factorize the 8a b out, and we end up with what we needed to end up with. So 8a b a squared plus b squared. The next part of this question says, given that 82,896 equals 17 to the power 4, take 5 to the power 4, write 82,896 as a product of its prime factors. Okay, for this question, we're going to use what we just did, and we're going to notice something about these two numbers. 17 and 5 are both odd numbers. That means they're going to have a midpoint, so the average of those two numbers, 17 plus 5 is 22. Divide by 2, you get 11. That's the midpoint of 17 and 5. So uh, 17, we can say, is 11 plus 6, and 5, we can say, is 11 take 6. So we're going to have this situation, we have a plus b and a take b. So we can say 17 to the power 4 take 5 to the power 4 is 11 plus 6 to the power 4 take 11 take 6 to the power 4. And this is a consequence of them both being odd numbers. If they're not both odd, this isn't going to work as neatly because they won't be whole numbers in here. So now we can use this fact that a plus b to the power 4 take a take b to the power 4 is 8ab a squared plus b squared. Well, here we have a equal to 11 and b equal to 6. So we can write this as 8 multiplied by a, so 11, multiplied by b, so 6, and then a squared plus b squared, so 11 squared plus 6 squared. Then let's simplify, and I'm going to write these numbers out the front as a product of prime numbers. So 8 is 2 cubed, 6 is 2 times 3, so we're going to have 2 cubed times 11 times 2 times 3, and 11 squared plus 6 squared is 157. And here you'll need to check that 157 is prime, uh, which isn't too difficult, you know, you can think of your, you know, 12, 13 times tables, you'll quickly notice that 157 is not in any times tables. Then we just need to neaten this up and we can say that 82,896 is 2 to the 4 times 3 times 11 times 157. So we've found the prime factors of, of this number, I would say fairly quickly, you know, I think that's easier than sort of trying to divide this by, you know, 2 or whatever. Uh, I think it would be pretty tough to find this number, 157. Uh, so there you go, there's a bit of a trick to finding the prime factors of larger numbers using the binomial theorem. Let's look at another question, I found this quite interesting. This question says, in the binomial expansion of 1 plus x to the power 30, the coefficients of x to the power 9 and x to the power 10 are p and q respectively. Find the value of q on p, and we are not allowed to use a calculator here. Okay, firstly, looking for that x to the power 9 term. And by the way, I should have said, as I always say at the start of the videos, give these questions a go if you're feeling confident. If you've never seen this topic before, maybe you just want to watch the video and see how it's done. But if you're using this video for revision, absolutely pause the video and give these questions a go. So x to the power 9, this is going to be the 21st term in this expansion, right? Because it will be 1 to the power of 21 and then x to the power 9. So we would get 30 choose 21 times, you know, 1 to the power 21. We don't have to write that. We can just write x to the power 9 this exponent is 30 take 21 okay so that's the x to the power 9 term the x to the power 10 term that's going to be 30 choose 20 x to the power 10 and now maybe you're thinking okay i need a calculator to calculate these in order to find this fraction but we can do it without a calculator if we remember the formula the choose formula so this is n choose r equal to n factorial over r factorial n take r factorial and let's write these in terms of this formula first. 
So 32, uh, sorry, 30 choose 21 is 30 factorial over 21 factorial, 9 factorial. This is P. So that was, P was the coefficient of x to the power 9. Okay. Q is going to be 30 factorial over 20 factorial, 10 factorial. And now we need Q on P. So let's write this as a fraction. So this is going to be this whole thing over this. So Q on P is going to be 30 factorial over 20 factorial, 10 factorial, all over P here. We get this monster of a fraction. Let's turn it into a multiplication. So flip and multiply, as they say. So Q on P is going to be 30 factorial over 20 factorial, 10 factorial, multiplied by this denominator here flipped around. So 21 factorial, 9 factorial over 30 factorial. And now you might notice we can do a whole heap of cancelling. Firstly, the 30 factorials, they're going to cancel out. And this 20 factorial is going to cancel with the first 20 terms in 21 factorial. Remember what a factorial is, 21 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 21. So that's going to include 20 factorial. So let's cancel those. Uh, so we'll end up with just 21 in this numerator here. That 9 factorial will also cancel with the first 9 terms of the 10 factorial. So we'll just be left with 10 down here in the denominator. So after all of that cancelling, we end up with Q on P equal to 21 on 10, which is equal to 2.1. Easily calculated without a calculator. I thought that was a nice question. Okay, on to binomial approximation. Here we want to estimate the value of 0.995 to the power of 30. Just before you get into this, I just want you to think about how you might calculate this rather than just saying, oh, just plug that into a calculator. How might you work this out or how might you even come up with a, a rough estimate? So 0.995 to the power 30. Well, you could round this to one and then you just get an estimate of one. But how could you come up with a more accurate estimate? It's kind of difficult, right? Using the binomial theorem, we can actually come up with a really accurate approximation quite quickly. To do that, we're going to use this expression, one take five X to the power of 30. And we're going to use the first four terms of this expansion. You can use more terms and come up with a more accurate approximation, but the first four terms you'll see gives us a really accurate approximation already. So expanding this out, we will get 1 plus 30 times negative 5x plus 30 choose 2 times negative 5x squared plus 30 choose 3 times negative 5x cubed. And we could do more terms, as I said, but we'll just settle with these first four terms. Do all your calculations, 30 choose 2, 30 choose 3, do the negative 5 squared, negative 5 cubed, multiply everything, simplify, and you'll end up with 1 take 150x plus 10,875x squared take 507,500x cubed. And now the way that we connect this expression to 0.995 is we let x equal something. So we're going to let x equal one on 1,000 or 10 to the power of negative three, because this means that one take five x will equal 0.995, right? So one take five one thousandths is 0.995. So now to find an estimate of this value, we can plug in one and 1,000 into this expansion. So we'll get 0.995 to the power 30 equal to one, take 150 on 10 cubed, plus 10,875 on 10 to the power six, plus 507,500 on 10 to the power nine. If you put this into a calculator, you will get approximately 0 0.860368, and this is to six decimal places. So how accurate is this? Well, if you put this into a calculator, you get 0 0.860384. So you can see already it's accurate to the fifth decimal place. So we get three six, and in the actual answer, we get three eight. Uh, so the fifth decimal place is where it differs. And we can actually calculate the percentage error in this answer. So we can take the difference. To get the percentage error, take the difference between these two values and divide by the actual answer and then multiply by 100. If you calculate this, we get a percentage error of 0.0019%. That's pretty accurate, right? 
just using the first four terms in this expansion. Now here you might be saying, well, we still needed our calculators to work all of this out. What was the point of all that? Why wouldn't I just plug that straight into my calculator? Well, firstly, I want to point out that even if you use these first two terms, one take 150 on 1000, you would still get pretty close. And you can work this out without a calculator. 150 on 1000 is 15 on 100 or 0.15. So one take 0.15 is 0.85. That gives you a pretty close estimate of the actual answer, 0.86. So firstly, this is a way to come up with a rough estimate without a calculator. Something you might be able to do mentally is just one take 30 times the second term and you get pretty close, 0.85. Closer than, you know, I would argue any other method would get. Much closer than one, right? And also this idea of finding estimates for, you know, complicated functions that are hard to work out any other way is sort of a fairly deep idea in mathematics. The idea of turning something like an exponential into a series of sums is something you see quite a lot as you study more and more mathematics. Okay, on to the last question, this probability question. This question says 20 people play a game at a school fate. Calculate the probability to three significant figures of five people winning when the probability of winning is one half. Nobody winning when the probability of winning is 0.7 and 13 people winning when the probability of winning is 0.6. Uh, so I didn't include that P is the probability of winning. I should have written that in the question. Okay, to calculate this, we want the function that gives you the, the probability of a certain number of people winning. And it looks like this. So the probability that exactly N people win a prize is 20 choose N uh, times P to the power N one take p to the power 20 take n. Where does this expression come from? Well, we have 20 people, n people can win. So 20 choose n is like the number of ways you can pick those winning people. So imagine those 20 people standing in a line and let's say five people win. You could pick the first five people in the line to win or the last five people or randomly pick five people you know, out of the line at different intervals. So you need to consider all of the different ways you could pick those five people. That's this 20 choose n or 20 choose five. P to the n is those five people winning. So imagine like flipping a coin and calculating the probability of flipping three heads in a row. That's 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. That's what this P to the n is doing. You know, the, the probability of winning multiplied by itself by as many people that win. One take P is the probability of losing and this accounts for all of the people that lost the game. So we not only have to consider the people that won the game, we have to consider the people out of these 20 in the line that lose as well. Uh, so that's where each part of this function comes from. That's a brief explanation. When you study statistics, you go into this a bit more deeply. So anyway, so let's use this expression to calculate five people winning when P equals a half. So all we really need to do here is plug these numbers into this expression. So we'll get 20 choose five multiplied by 0.5 to the power five multiplied by 0.5 to the power 15 and plug that in, you'll get approximately 0 0.0148 or about 1.5%. Pretty low chance, which to me that was actually surprising. If there was a 50% ch chance of winning, um, I would thought that would be fairly high chance that five people win, but there you go. So part B, nobody winning when P equals 0.7. So plugging these numbers in, then we get 20 choose zero, nobody won, 0.7 to the power of zero, multiplied by 0.3 to the power of 20. Calculate that, you get approximately 3.49 times 10 to the negative 11. Almost impossible, you would say. Um, and this makes sense, right? If nobody wins, all you're really calculating is the probability of everyone losing, multiplying that by itself 20 times for everyone who's playing. The last one, 13 people winning when P equals 0.6. Plugging those in, we get 20 choose 13 times 0 0.6 to the power 13, multiplied by 0.4 to the power seven. This is approximately 0.166 or about 16%. And if you were to label these in terms of their probability of happening, you would say the first one is not very likely, the second one is practically impossible. This is a very, very low chance of happening. And the last one, 16% is, you know, somewhat unlikely. It could happen, but, you know, more than more often than not, it won't occur. Um, and by the way, if you've ever watched a YouTuber named Dream, 
this is the sort of thing they used to prove that he was cheating at Minecraft. Uh, there's plenty of videos you can check out on that. Just type in something like Minecraft cheating or something. I'm sure there'll be videos including this type of mathematics in there that you can check out. Okay, so I hope you found that video interesting on using the binomial theorem to answer different types of questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.